Psalm 11, 12. For the end, concerning the eighth, a psalm by David. Save me, O Lord, for the holy man has ceased. The truthful are diminished from among the sons of men. Each one speaks useless things to his neighbor. Deceptive lips speak with a double heart. May the Lord destroy all deceptive lips. And the tongue that speaks boastful things. Saying, We will make our tongue powerful. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Because of the suffering of the needy. And because of the groaning of the poor. Now I will arise, says the Lord. I will establish them in salvation. I will declare it boldly. The words of the Lord are pure words. Like silver fired in a furnace of earth. Purified seven times. You shall guard us, O Lord. You shall preserve us from this generation forever. The ungodly walk in a circle. In your exaltation, you highly exalted the sons of men. Psalm 12, 13. For the end, a psalm by David. How long, O Lord? Will you forget me to the end? How long will you turn your face from me? How long will I take counsel in my soul? Having grief in my heart daily. How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Look upon me and hear me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say. I prevailed against him. Those w ho afflict me greatly rejoice, if I am shaken. But I hope in your mercy. My heart shall greatly rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, who show s kindness to me. I will sing to the name of the Lord Most High. Psalm 13, 14. For the end, a psalm by David. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, they are abominable in their habits. There is none, not even one, who does good. The Lord stooped down from heaven to look upon the sons of men. To see if there w ere any who understood or sought God. All turned aside and w ere altogether corrupted. Their w as not even one doing good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. They deal deceptively with their tongues. The poison of serpents is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Affliction and suffering are in their wis. And the wi of peace they have not no n. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Do all the workers of lawlessness not know? They eat up my people as they eat bread, and they do not call upon the Lord. They w ear in great fear w hear no fear was. Because God is in the righteous generation. You shame the counsel of the poor man. Because the Lord is his hope. Who w ill bring about the salvation of Israel out of Zion. When the Lord returns his people from captivity. Let Jacob greatly rejoice, and let Israel be glad. Psalm 14, 15. 1 A Psalm by David. Lord, who shall dwell in your tabernacle? Who shall live ye in your holy mountain? He who walks blamelessly, and works righteousness. And speaks truth in his heart. Who does not deceive with his tongue. Neither does evil to his neighbor. And does not find fault with those nearest him. He disdains those who do evil in his presence. But he holds in honor those w ho fear the Lord. He swears an oath to his neighbor and does not set it aside. He does not lend his money at interest. And he does not take a bribe against the innocent. He w ho does these things shall never be shaken. Notes from this page. 11 colon 1 Psalm 11 presents a contrast between the godly who live in light of Christ, the end, v1. And the eighth day, v1, that is, the coming of Christ, the resurrection from the dead. And the life of the world to come, creed, and the ungodly, who walk in a circle, v9. That is, who live only within the confined vision of their seven days each week. And as the godly journey through this present world, 1, they pray for deliverance from the ungodliness around them, verses 2, 3, 2, 
they ask the Lord to destroy the ungodly attitudes and behavior around them, verses 4, 5, and 3, they groan to the Lord in the midst of their suffering, v6a. And because of their prayers and groaning in this way, the Lord, through his resurrection, I will arise, v6, 1, boldly establishes them in salvation, v6, 2. Purifies them in virtue with his words, v7, 3, guards and preserves them from the ungodly generation, v8, and, 4, through his ascension, exaltation, v9b, highly exalts his godly ones, v9b, see also Philippians 2 colon 9, 11, Ephesians 2 colon 6, 7, 12 colon 1 ps 12 teaches the church how to attain to an exceedingly joyful heart in singing to the Lord, v6b, who is the end, v1, 1, by godly sorrow and repentance over sins. Committed, lest the devil and sinful passions, my enemy, be victorious, verses 3, 5, see also. 2 Corinthians 7:10, 2, by petitioning the Lord to enlighten the eyes of the heart, lest the sleep in death overtake one, v4, see also f118, 514, and, 3, by hoping in the Lord's mercy. v6a. 13 colon 1 ps 13 describes both Jews and Gentiles who say in their hearts, there is no God. v1, see also Romans 3 colon 9, 18. For although they may claim to know God, nevertheless, they are actually denying he exists, because of, 1, their total involvement in a state of moral depravity, verses 1, 3, 2, their refusal to seek God, v2, 3, their persecution of God's righteous people, verses 4 to 6, and, 4, their denial of the incarnate God, the Lord Jesus Christ, v7. 14 colon 1 Psalm 14 teaches the church the transfigured life the faithful are to live, v1, as they look for the resurrection from the dead and the life of the world to come, creed. They are, 1, to be holy inwardly and outwardly, v2, and, 2, to love their neighbor, verses 3 to 5. And those who live this way shall never be shaken, v6, either in this world or in the world to come.